Angularity has come to define my work, and in this video I'll be throwing a very angular vase made from recycled clay that's turned from a slurry like this back into larger blocks, which I eventually keep wrapped in plastic to stop them from drying out too much. This process of clay reclamation is a task I've shown in far greater detail in other films I've made, links to which I'll leave on screen now and in the description below. This stoneware is eventually wedged up and formed into a lump that's free of air and ready to be thrown with, although as I've left that lump of clay sitting, ageing for a while now, it needs to be kneaded up, as the outer layer of that block was harder than the material encased inside, so by wedging it I mix these two textures to create a ball of clay that's a single smooth, even texture throughout. I then chuck it firmly against the wheelhead and seal it in place with a fingertip, then Using my hand like a small ladle, I splash the piece of clay with water, and it's this that lubricates the clay, making throwing on the wheel like this possible. When I begin to centre the clay, I only ever work on it when the wheel is spinning and when it's wet, as I want the lump of clay to react to how I press on it without it sticking to my hands, especially during this process of coning up and down the clay, aligning the particles it's made from, and making it a bit more plastic and perhaps easier to throw with. If you'd like to learn more about this process, it's another topic I've made a much more detailed video about. You can get to it by clicking on the link top right, or by finding the one I'll include in this video's description. If I'm speaking honestly, I don't do this for every pot I make. For bowls or simple mugs, I can get away with centering really quite poorly, and then fix any unevenness in the first pull or two. Whereas if I know the shape is going to be more complex, like this vase that's going to have a very sharp corner thrown into its waist, then I will spend some additional time centering and coning it. The same can also be said for whenever I throw larger pots. Unfortunately I didn't weigh this lump out before throwing it, but I imagine it's about 2.5 pounds, which is just over 1.1 kilograms. For the first number of pulls, I'll be using this mud tool sponge instead of my knuckle on the outside. It's like a small reservoir and retains water as you're pulling, which can help you pull more evenly and smoothly. But first, I need to create a hollow in the centre of this pot, opening it up to create the cavity most vases have. I press a wetted finger and thumb into the centre, pushing all the way down until there's about a centimetre left in the base. With that depth obtained, I then slide my fingers outward to widen the base. If you want to check the depth, say if you're worried about it being too thick or too thin, take a needle tool and simply push it through the bottom. Then place your hand inside with the fingertip to the base and pull it out to see the depth. It's better it's too thick compared to being too thin, as you can always trim away that excess weight at the leather hard stage later. Next, I make sure the corner where the wall meets the base is relatively sharp. It doesn't have to be a perfect right angle, but on a shape like this, if that area is too curved, it positions excess clay on the inside, which will be very difficult, if not impossible, to remove later, depending on the shape you've thrown so it's best to get it right at this stage when you can still easily reach your hands inside. I then collar this thicker ring of clay upward into this cone-like shape, which points the clay into the direction I'm going to be pulling it, and thins the walls out slightly, making the walls more manageable to throw. I then take that soaked sponge and slide it into the base, compressing right towards the bottom and then moving it up. On the inside, my fingertips are just above where the sponge is pressing, and they push out slightly, creating a bump in the wall of clay that the sponge is essentially lifting up. You can see the bulge form as I press my fingers out. I then dig the soaked sponge beneath it, and then together, my hands locked in place relative to each other, they lift up the walls of clay. And I've left this arrow here just to create a stationary point that marks where the rim was prior to this pull, just to give you an idea of the height the cylinder gains after this lift. It can be good practice to collar your walls in after each pull, creating a cylinder that doesn't splay out so much, especially at the top. I then douse the walls inside and out with water, and then begin the next pull. And with this one, I'm going to start creating the very rough shape I plan on ending up with. I want it to have a more bellied form, so I press out more from the inside as my hands travel up. As I reach the top, I make sure I don't press and squeeze through the rim, creating a very weak, thin lip. It helps at this stage to leave it relatively thick, as it being substantial will give the pot strength, which is helpful for when you're pulling the walls up and shaping the pot. Additionally, if you don't leave yourself enough material at the top, 
When it comes to finishing the pot, you may run out of material to work with if it's too mean and flimsy. Just like you can check the thickness of the base with a needle, you can also do the same with the walls to make sure they're not too thick. They're about 6 or 7 millimeters here, which is perfect, as this piece is going to have a really exaggerated shape, and if the walls were too thin at this point, they'd simply tear and split as I bellied the shape out further. These lines show the rough shape I'm after, not including the rim section, which I want to make almost horizontal as a sharp edge that overhangs the walls. I won't throw this pot immediately into the shape I want. Instead, just like when pulling the walls up, I'll do it bit by bit, gradually widening the form, as it's when you rush shaping like this that things can very easily and quickly go wrong. If it's a shape you're very familiar with, then you'll know what you can get away with, but often when making new shapes, it's natural to take things a bit more slowly and carefully. Now, before I begin really bellying this pot out, I'll first scrape away much of the slip from this lower section, and to do this I'm pressing the clay out from the inside against the sharp metal edge of this rib tool. I'm not harshly pressing the metal into the clay, as doing so will cause issues, especially if the walls of your pot are thin. Whenever I make my more angular shapes, I never create that harsh angle until the very end, as once that more defined change in shape has been set, it can be very hard to alter it thereafter. Now, before I continue stretching the shape out any further, I'm first going to blast that lower part with a heat gun. This stiffens the walls up, strengthening them and making them easier to alter without them bowing out too much in the entire pot losing its shape. At this stage you can more or less exactly see where I want the sharp change of angle to be, but again I won't truly define it, or at least in most cases I wouldn't, until the shape is 99% of the way thrown. So for now I'll leave it rounded, as the pot will be able to hold its shape better, and I'll still be able to easily make any adjustments if need be. Now that the clay is drier, I've switched to using a smoother plastic tool on the outside, for the shaping at least, as the clay is less likely to catch on this material as compared to the sharp metal. At this point I switch my focus back onto the top of the pot, as the opening is a bit too wide for my liking. So I wet it, and then throw this top section inward, pushing on the outside with a fingertip, just like I did with the sponge at the beginning. I'm thinning this part out whilst pinching the neck in, but again I'm still leaving enough material in the very top of the rim, so that there's clay available to throw into the final shape I want later. I can then begin to angle the rim outward, by pinching and throwing it and angling it down. To get the more refined shape I'm after, I press down on the lip with the straight side of a plastic kidney, and then remove the slip both below the lip and from the inside. Please excuse the soft focus here, but essentially this next segment is myself gradually bellying the shape out further and then defining that sharper transition and trying to get it right without that line undulating up and down, which can be surprisingly difficult and very distracting, but it's all the more obvious when the wheel is spinning around like so, and I was eventually able to get it to a point where it wasn't quite so noticeable. It's not perfect, but it'll do. With the rest of the shape more or less where I want it, I can now refine the lip section to the degree I want. There is something black spinning around in the top. It could even be some hammer scale from my recent experimentations with bronze and steel hammer scale mixed into the clay, in which case it'll create a lovely iron blossom directly on the rim of this pot, something a bit like this. I then spent the last few moments just pushing the shape out a bit more. The walls felt very thin at this point, so this is about as far as I think I can push it, without them beginning to ripple and tear. Lastly, I sponge out any excess water from inside, and then I used the same sponge on a stick to glide over the interior walls, smoothing them. As this piece wasn't made on a bat, before I separate it from the wheel and lift it away, it's given one last blast with the heat gun so that I can lift it off without the clay walls deforming as my hands clasp around them.
This pot has a simple shape that's deceptively difficult to throw. Harsh angles can be a challenge, but recently I've wanted to make more shapes like this that really push it, and I can't wait to trim this pot to refine its shape further. One last thing, for much of this process, this bucket is kept to my left. It has a sharp plastic edge which I can scrape my hands against to remove the slip, and it's also where I chuck any larger bits of clay so they don't immediately clog up my wheel. It's also for when filming a video like this, where I wash my hands dozens of times before drying them and changing the camera angle. So if you notice that my hands do look excessively clean throughout much of this process, this is why. But perhaps I should just pretend I'm a very clean thrower. As I have just one pot to store overnight before turning it the following day, instead of wrapping it in plastic, I simply place a bucket over it to stop it from drying out too much. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thank you so much for taking your time to watch, and for all the recent comments, likes, and subscriptions. It all means an awful lot. And I'll see you next time.